Good afternoon. We're super excited to be here in Seattle for SOTMAS 2016. I am Tom Gerton from the U.S. State Department. And I'm Rory Nealon from USAID Office of Transition Initiatives. And today we're here to discuss the phenomenal Virtual Student Foreign Service Program and how we partnered this past year with U.S. college students to create some good data for OpenStreetMap. Um, my office is the Humanitarian Information Unit, and we are an interagency uh, center composed of multiple specialists. We range from humanitarian analysts and researchers, also have GIS analysts and cartographers to make some great maps. You could visit us and check out some of our products at hiu.state.gov. Um, a lot of our products go to senior policymakers to keep them informed of a lot of the latest humanitarian situations. Also, we're big proponents of open data. We post a lot of our products on HEX, for instance. We're also a hub and able to interact with many uh, partners inside and outside of government. And finally, we're able to leverage United States government resources and pass on geographical products and commercial satellite imagery to some of our partners. And one of the ways we do this is through our MapGive initiative which is a flagship initiative of the State Department's Open Government Plan. And we aim to increase the number of digital humanitarian mappers by supporting OpenStreetMap. You could go to our website at mapgive.state.gov and figure out why you should map, learn some of the tools, and then get um, started by mapping some of the hot mapping tasks. And um, as I mentioned before, we also provide commercial satellite imagery for tracing for some tasks. And we also support events and mapathons as well. Cool. So I work at USAID in a small office called the Office of Transition Initiative. Uh, just for those real quick, I won't bore you too much with the uh, bureaucracy of a large federal agency. But uh, USAID's mission is to help end extreme poverty, promote resilient democratic societies, while advancing our security and prosperity, our being America's. Um, so where, where does my office fit into all this? Well, we work at the very local, local level as much as possible, uh, and we try to be as adaptive as possible to find windows of opportunity um, to catalyze on local democratic and peace and stability initiatives that are going on. So that's one reason why we're so interested in OSM is kind of something that Taylor is touching on uh, with the Millennium Development Goals, how there's so much out there for the national level, but very little at the kind of the micro and local level. There's other US agencies that are offices that do a way better job of collecting statistics at the national level, what's going on in the country. So oftentimes there's uh, an absence of that at the local level and that's where OSM comes in for us. Um, at any given time, we're working in about 15 countries around the world, more or less, um, across the geographic uh, extent of the, of the globe. And so we have a very, very uh, large diversity in projects. Um, each country will be very different from what's going on in another. Um, one being maybe promoting uh, a new election that's coming up, while the other kind of uh, supporting some more uh, opening of the media. So this past September, we were ready to take off with the VSFS program. This was our second year doing it as an office, but my first year leading it, so I was super excited. We were equipped with lots of great existing OpenStreetMap materials already. And also, our special fuel was loads of intelligent U.S. college students motivated to get mapping right away. We um, collaborated with each other and found out that we had several similar goals. In MapGive, we really wanted to spread out our wings and hit up different geographical areas outside of the Washington area. And OTI, they were interested in connecting students as a resource to their programs in the field and identifying gaps in mapping and have them become mapped in OpenStreetMap. So you could find out more and even sign up yourself by going to vsfs.state.gov. The Virtual Student Foreign Service Program is the largest virtual internship program in the world. And US students could contribute um, an average of 10 hours a week, um, even though we average slightly less, I believe. And it's a smart and transparent way for our government and uh, citizens to collaborate on projects. People could apply by just going to usajobs.gov and they'd select their top three uh, projects. And then later on this summer, we'll accept some of the applications and get started in September. And it lasts throughout the school year and usually ends around the following April.
Yeah, so like Tom mentioned, we had some uh, areas of overlap and kind of structured our program the same way. So in the first phase, we got students uh, familiar with OpenStreetMap. A lot of them were coming in with absolutely no familiarity at all and zero background knowledge on it. So just getting them up and registered was a task on itself, especially because we had so many. Um, pointing them to, in the right direction as far as learning resources go. Um, there's so many that exist out there that we didn't need to reinvent the wheel at all for that. Um, and then third, getting them familiar with OSM's data structure. Uh, it's easy to get started up in, in mapping and digitizing, but without that uh, kind of base understanding of how the data is structured in OSM and how tagging works and basics like that, um, you're not really contributing that much. Um, so one of the first tasks, just to highlight as an example, we got them to do was to map their uh, hometown, uh, specifically their house, and if that was already in there, uh, maybe one of their favorite stores or ice cream shops or something like that. And then we just jumped in straight to the OpenStreetMap tools. I'm assuming everyone here is familiar with ID Editor. It's a great tool, and it's perfect for beginners. So we went straight there, and they also have a great you know, built-in editor tutorial right there. And then right after ID Editor, we jumped into the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap Task Manager and explained how it's used to organize uh, mapping projects among various mappers and how it's also a useful tool for validation. So after we got them kind of familiar uh, editing with ID, we wanted to take them to make the, have them make the next step to be more of an inter intermediate mapper by using Jossum to do QA and QC of different uh, projects around the world, specifically hot tasks. Um, you know, after a large mapping project's done, there's a need to kind of go in and validate all the work that has been contributed because oftentimes these map mapping parties that have been hosted will have uh, absolute novices kind of mapping. So using the kind of advanced features in Jossum to help contribute. Uh, kind of an extra level of quality to large projects that are going around the world. Um, to help facilitate this, we had a kind of an online training we gave our students, um, which was a little bit difficult to organize, especially with people, um, students from across America and different time zones, different things going on in their life. But we were able to record the training uh, over Google Hangouts and share it. Um, it was our first time doing something like this, so it was you know, not the smoothest thing as possible, but we're hoping to improve on this for next year. Um, and do a lot more of these with our next round of students and also spread the work around between uh, the different organizations so it's not just one of us doing all the lift. And in addition to mapping each week a little bit in OpenStreetMap, we wanted to introduce our interns to other facets of each of our offices and introduce some of the other projects and get them involved with other projects within our office. So here are just two examples in the HIU. One of them is the humanitarian data exchange. Um, this is sort of one of our um, analysts' go-to spots for humanitarian information. Uh, different agencies could just upload their latest data sets. And they had recently created a freshness data dashboard where they classified each of the data sets based on how often they should be updated. And this will help make the data sets more relevant. Um, so they asked for our help and then our VSFS interns using Google Sheets they did research on um, over 3,500 of their data sets and classified them, oh, how often should this data set be updated? So this will go help them uh, contact some of the uh, data set owners so they could keep on making their data sets up to date. Another one of our projects was for PEPFAR, uh, the President's uh, Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. And um, our in-office PEPFAR analyst was able to provide us with a data set of over 2,000 health facilities in Cameroon, as well as uh, some latitude and longitude coordinates. So using Google Sheets again, our interns went in and they researched using OpenStreetMap and Gazetteers and GeoNames and were able to uh, come up with some better locations for some of these points. Uh, here's how the data set looked before and you could say, see that some of the points were even outside the country, so that it definitely had to be uh, rectified here. Cool. Uh, so for as far as OTI went, um, we took things a little bit differently. So we have field teams around the world kind of working in these countries, so we wanted to connect our interns to be a resource for them. Um, so we kind of structured it around what our interns wanted to do. We were pretty flexible as far as this internship was. Um, we just wanted to see what type of interest our students had and how can we structure that to uh, benefit our office. Um, so we assigned a geographic reason, re or region based on where our office is working um, and based on the student's interest so they could research that area and get some in-depth knowledge 
into the OSM community there, as well as doing research and trying to identify uh, gaps in OSM data. Uh, what features need to be added, what attribute data is missing from these places. Um, and I think what really helped was engaging the OSM communities in these countries. Not all of them had a very active community, but when possible, uh, trying to align our needs with theirs for kind of more continued and sustained uh, improvements to the map. Um, so this was basically formalized in a work plan, and we had our students kind of contribute to this. Of course, random things would pop up over time, um, such as hot tasks that were super important, or a new country program that started in our office. Um, which needed to be supported. Uh, our office takes a very unique approach compared to others in USAID as far as uh, starting a new country program. Uh, I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but we basically throw a lot of different activities out there, try and see which ones stick. And so we need a kind of a broad range of uh, data points to help support that initial push for finding the true purpose of the program. So uh, we, we identify what the problem is, but we try to f figure out what is the most appropriate tool, and we try to supplement that, our local knowledge there, with as much uh, data points as possible. And um, one way we improved was our communication tools from the previous year, we mainly used email. But this year, uh, we decided to, to build on a Slack instance we're already using for many different um, stakeholders inside and outside of government. We use Slack, which is basically like, I think of it as instant messaging on steroids. It's very easy to use and you could create different uh, communication channels. So we created a private channel and added our VSFS interns there. And it was really great because they got to, um, you know, ask each other questions. If they, you know, had a small, um, maybe digitizing question, they could just upload the building and ask about it. They would also answer each other's questions, which is great. Also, we used Google Hangouts more this year for joint training. And Google Hangouts on air was also beneficial because we could record the video and post it online. Yeah, one thing we had our students to use Slack for was to post the change set number that they did in there. Um, just so another student could go in and QA and edit uh, or check what they did just to make sure we had a high quality of edits and contributed to the map. Um, now we'll go a little bit into the metrics and measuring the production of what our students actually did. Um, we're hoping to blow this out of the water next year. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, so we had a pretty diverse group of students from around the US. Um, and I think uh, MapGib and OTI really complemented each other. Um, of course, there's a large concentration of uh, colleges and students from the Northeast, but uh, we did get a pretty good range, I feel like. And I know you wanted to give a shout out to one of your interns. Yeah, our intern, uh, Taylor Hickson, made this map here. One, one week we did a CardoDB tutorial, and I think um, next year we're going to introduce more tutorials, like how do you actually extract OSM data and maybe use QGIS and start of uh, build that um, as well. And this is sort of a word cloud. Um, I know our colleague David Sager in, in OTI hates word clouds, so we had to throw this slide in. Um, but we basically have uh, a lot of people studying international public relations, which is great. Also about half of our interns studied uh, geography and had some sort of GIS experience, which is great too. This program is really geared towards everybody. We start from step one. Um, and you know, we also had a significant amount of advanced degrees as well. So I want to show that. Cool. Um, so as far as chain sets goes, a uh, big shout out to Thad Kowarowski, uh, who helped us with some of uh, the back-end technology to help us determine how many changes our students have done. Uh, so uh, we tracked this by using hashtags in the chain set, of course. Uh, so we had about 460 from uh, my group, 706 from Tom's, for a total of about 50,000 uh, changes on the map. And here we have a, uh, a torque map that is animating all the changes throughout the whole year. Uh, lots going on. Um, two things that sort of stick out. One was last, no last November, we helped out in response to Hurricane Patricia in Western Mexico. Shortly after that, there was an earthquake in Eastern Afghanistan. Uh, our students also mapped that. That's one of the strengths we figured out was, you know, ability to do surge mapping when it's needed. Um, and then there's some projects that you noticed too, right, Ori? Yep. Uh, um, so as you can, this is similar visualization of uh, the previous map, but uh, we had a new program start in Macedonia, and so we, like I mentioned, we wanted to really uh, flood that with as much base data as we could, so we had our students working there. Um, we also have two programs in uh, eastern uh, Lebanon and Syria, 
And so we had students really focused there, so you can see a large concentration there. Also, um, I was able to go to Peru last winter and do a three-day mapping workshop. And it was really cool because I got our VSFS interns to pre-map. So when we got there and did field mapping, we already had the base map and it was easy to add, uh, like the names of the streets and the building names, for instance. And uh, we look forward to adding more metrics in the future. There's a lot of great work being done, for example, by DevSeed and Mapbox and Missing Maps, and they're all really great people and look forward to working with them as well. Cool, yeah, just another visualization to see uh, our changes over time. Um, you can see spikes. I think a lot of them are re related to uh, hot tasks that we helped our, or our students helped out with. Um, the same one over here, splitting it between uh, OTI and MapGive. Uh, Tom was really nice and gave his students the winner off while I had mine keep working, so you can see that in there. <laughs> uh, but that shouldn't uh, discourage you from uh, choosing one over the other. So we're really excited. We're definitely doing this project again. And we're going to be adding a new co-pilot, co Peace Corps, with us. And so it's going to be great. We're going to have three strong groups working side by side. And we're going to get back into lab and have some lessons learned. Uh, essentially, we figured out some of the strengths of the program. Um, people are good at mapping, doing surge mapping, but also we have a longer amount of time than usually we encounter mapping events. So we could really hit up on advanced mapping techniques and we wanna focus more on validation uh, for next year as well. Uh, we're gonna continue using hashtags, probably used uh, combined hashtags, but also individual hashtags. Hopefully we'll get additional metrics such as number of buildings and roads and whatnot. Uh, we also gave out some surveys, and some of the things we're going to improve upon is having uh, more contact with volunteers, maybe using some of our in-office volunteers to provide feedback and hand-to-hand -hand, um, critiques, but also uh, creating an alumni group. A lot of our interns want to stay involved in the project, so if we create um, a group in LinkedIn or Facebook, they could continue contributing to these projects and just keep on improving the le learning materials using you know, existing resources such as TeachOSM um, and other, other types of learning materials. Also, the joint trainings are really great, so we wanna have multiple of those spread out throughout the year. And it'd be really great if um, we had a joint virtual map off, uh, MapGiv versus OTI versus Peace Corps, that'd be really fun. Um, any, any input? From your end? Yeah, I just think this was a great experience. Uh, it wasn't just us getting uh, value out of it. Our students did as well. Um, one of them was able to get a scholarship to attend this conference, so she's here today, I think. Um, also, uh, I was able to write letters of recommendation and help students get uh, course credit. So uh, they didn't just do this uh, you know, for us. We, we helped them out, and I think they got some valuable skills out of it. Um, and the other thing we want to require, I think, in the future is have students uh, sponsor a mapathon in their school to kind of amplify the impact. So it's not just them editing it, but engaging their students' population uh, with this. Um, so yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, here's the links to sign up if you're a college student or in a master's program. Um, it's a really cool opportunity, like I said. Uh, normally, uh, DC gets flooded with unpaid interns uh, in the summertime, where they have to subsidize their own housing and food costs. Um, so this gets you very valuable experience, but from the comfort of your own home, and I think a little bit of a smaller financial impact on the pocketbook. Um, and we'll uh, really look forward to working with you, so tell your friends and neighbors and nephews and grandchildren and stuff. Are there any questions? Or is everyone just hungry? So maybe I missed this one you said in the beginning, but the, so are there any international uh, students that are engaged in this, like mapping their own environments? And um, I'm glad you asked that. I think that's actually a great opportunity. Um, this program isn't set up for that, but um, I do want to plug in uh, Youth Mappers is, is an initiative of USAID, and they are partnering with many international universities and students. So that, I think, would be um, a good way to, to sign up if you're internationally based.
All right, if there's no more questions, uh, thank you both. Uh, we're going to break for lunch. Yep. And don't